Hey there and welcome back to NBA 2K18. My name is Pete and today we complete one more part of the first season with our expansion team, the Louisville Legionnaires. Last time we left off with a nice 4 game win streak and now we're nearing a Christmas game against the Cavaliers, so let's see if we can stay successful. However, before we can get started with the first game of this episode we have another trade to look at, as the Trailblazers want to flip Evan Turner and Pat Connaughton for Courtney Lee and Carlo Quinn from the Knicks. For the Trailblazers, the key piece of this trade definitely Evan Turner with his $53 million contract, while Pat Connaughton should likely be considered a sweetener in this trade, albeit not necessarily a good one. The Knicks would therefore take on a bit more additional salary, especially in the 2019-20 season, but apart from that they don't really gain much. Courtney Lee is already a serviceable backup shooting guard and Turner's role on the team would likely not be much different, and losing Carlo Quinn just to grab a guy who makes her finances even worse is likely not worth it. So I'm more than convinced the Knicks say no in this case, and so we once again do the same. The game against the Heat then once again a close one and I'd like to take you into the fourth quarter, where none other than Josh Richardson once again dominated. Beautiful slam here over Justice Winslow to put the team up by 4, and just seconds later Deontay Davis increasing the lead up to 5 with a beautiful dunk over Kelly Olynyk. Davis also got fouled in the process but he missed the end one here, which the Heat immediately take advantage of as Winslow blows by Harkless here and sinks the floater over Bryce Johnson with the foul. And Winslow would make the free throw, bringing the Heat back within 2. A bit of back and forth ensued and then with 1 minute left to play and the shot clock winding down, Tyler Hewlett with the mid-range leader to finally give us some breathing room and put the Louisville Legionnaires up 6. Dion Waiters shot at the other end misses and the Heat decide to foul, luckily though we're not on the penalty yet, otherwise we would have sent Deontay Davis to the line. Instead we can inbound the ball to Josh Richardson who also gets fouled and then at least makes one of his two free throws. And that 7 point lead was also enough for us to hold on to the win. The Heat fail to score on their next possession, we can dribble out the clock and secure our 5th victory in a row. And this man right here, Josh Richardson once again our player of the game. Not only did he lead the team in scoring with 21 points, but he also had 5 steals, including a few crucial ones in the 4th quarter. All good things have to come to an end at some point though, and that was the case in our game against the Boston Celtics. The Celtics currently not too far away from us in the Eastern Conference, still even without an injured Gordon Hayward and despite a bad first quarter able to beat us comfortably 122-105. For a change, Farrell our top scorer with 21 points to go along with 5 assists, but then a familiar face, Josh Richardson keeps the hot streak going, 17 points tonight, shooting a pretty efficient 7 of 13 from the field. Deontay Davis once again with a double-double and the block, and I have to admit even though I had my doubts starting him at the center at the beginning of the season, he has grown nicely into that role as a defensive anchor, and his offensive production with about 9-10 to 10 points per game is actually a bit more than I originally expected. Now Christmas time is coming up and that means it's time for presents. So let's skip ahead to December 25th and then have a look at contract extensions. And we can see here, Josh Richardson willing to re-sign with the Louisville Legionnaires. At this point I think this is an absolute no-brainer. Performance-wise, I would currently consider Richardson the best player on the team, and I definitely see him as a core building block for the long-term future. What I realistically don't see is him getting his expected $3 million per year. Not because I want to underpay him, but because I think the guy is worth much, much more. In the real NBA, Richardson just signed a contract extension with the Heat worth $42 million over 4 years, and I think that is closer to the range that we have to look at as well. And I would actually like to give him a 4 year extension, but I would like to stay below the $40 million mark, so I think a flat $9.5 million for the next 4 seasons is more than fair. So $38 million for the next 4 seasons, I think should Richardson continue to develop the way I hope he does, that will be a very good deal for us. And of course, no surprises here, Richardson accepts the offer and is now locked down until 2021. Up next, Christmas game against the Cavaliers and no surprises in this one, the Cavaliers absolutely demolish us 141-102. Our best scorers, Euless, Johnson once again, Josh Richardson and also more Harkless, but on the Cavaliers side, Thomas, James and Love absolutely dominating, all three of them with impressive double-doubles, LeBron James barely missed a triple-double, and so in the end this result probably inevitable. Last two games of 2017 coming up, and while we simulate ahead to the game against the Pacers, we get a great message here, Cal Kuzma has returned from his injury. 
Now, this does make things a bit tricky in the rotation because Davis Batans has performed pretty well at the small forward, which is the position that I normally would intend Kuzma to play at. At the same time, Hernan Gomez is blocking the spot as the backup power forward, so I had to ease Kuzma back into the rotation with only 10 minutes per game, with minutes taken from both the starters Bryce Johnson and Mo Harkless, but also from Batans and Hernan Gomez off the bench. And I have to admit this rotation currently looks a bit stitched together, especially with Bertans and Kuzma rotating from the power forward to the small forward frequently, and having 12 players in the rotation is not ideal either, but at the moment it's the best I could come up with without leaving anyone out who deserves playing time. Our new rotation then seems to work as we beat the paces 112 to 95. After a close first half, we pull away in the second and get win number 12 of the regular season. Hernan Gomez with 19 points, 8 rebounds and 3 steals in only 18 minutes, our best player off the bench, followed by the ever-consistent Josh Richardson. Both Deontay Davis and Bryce Johnson with nice double-doubles, and also a quick look at Cal Kuzma, his 9 minutes of playing time were enough to produce 4 points and 2 rebounds. Last game of 2017 now against the Chicago Bulls, and once again I'd like to take you into the last minute of this one. The Bulls in control of this one, we tried to mount a comeback but it didn't really go all that well. Still, after the steal by Deontay Davis here I had some hope, as Josh Richardson hammers down the thunderous jam over Robin Lopez. Now I decided not to foul and let the Bulls play out one more possession, and they promptly punished me for that. Nikola Mirotic shooting a tough shot over Mohawkless here that somehow falls in, and down by 8 with only 20 seconds to go, this game was out of hand. So, we finished 2017 with a loss, Tyler Hewlis and Mohawkless our best scorers with 20 and 19 points respectively, with Richardson and Johnson both able to add 10 points each. Once again, a look at Cal Kuzma, who saw 10 minutes of action tonight, and I don't really like what I see here. Two rebounds, one turnover, and he also missed every single shot he took. That definitely has to improve for Kuzma to stay in the rotation. Now, he's only back for two games, so we won't overreact here, but I will keep a close eye on him for the next two or three weeks. Now, with the year coming to an end and the trade deadline not even one and a half months away, I was also thinking about some roster moves. So I had a look at the rumors, and one that caught my eye, this one right here, the Nuggets actively shopping rookie Tyler Lydon. Lydon, a 6'9 power forward, drafted with the 24th pick of the first round this year, and understandably suffering in a crowded power forward rotation in Denver. Skill-wise, Lydon works pretty nice as a floor stretcher with high 3-point ratings, but he's also not completely incompetent inside, and he's not too bad on the defensive end either. So I was thinking, and one player that came to mind that reminded me a bit of him, Davis Bertans. So I had a closer look and compared the two to each other, and to be honest, I think that Leiden has a small edge here. When it comes to 3-point shooting, they're about equal, but Leiden is much more versatile. And when it comes to their weaknesses, especially defense, Leiden is also slightly better than Bertans. Now Leiden is a bit smaller, so he might have a minor disadvantage inside, but he makes up for that with longer wingspan. Also, and I think this might be Leiden's biggest edge, he's 4 years younger than Batans, and already one could argue that he's the better player, and I only imagine that 4 years down the line that picture will be much clearer. Also, if we look closer at their skills, we see a lot of bad on both sides, but once again Leiden definitely less of a liability on defense than Batans. Now, I just quickly threw something together here, this is what a potential trade might look like, but I would very much appreciate your input on that. Since Batans is on an expiring contract and cannot be extended, I think the Nuggets definitely need something on top in this case, so I added an unprotected second rounder for 2019. However, I don't really want to go overboard here, because the Nuggets are actively trying to get rid of Leiden, so a second rounder and the bench player should be enough for them. Then again, I'm not quite sure they would agree to this. After all, Batans would pretty much end up in the same position that Leiden is in right now, and I have to imagine that Leiden's spot in the rotation is currently one of the main reasons the Nuggets try to trade him. For us, well, Davis Bertans has been pretty solid since moving to the backup small forward off the bench, so why change anything about that? Still, the idea of acquiring a player who is a bit more complete in his skill set is definitely intriguing, and so I just put this move out there as a proposal, and I would be very happy if you could let me know what you think about it. Do you think it makes sense for us? Do you think it makes sense for the Nuggets? Leave your comments down below and let me know. And that is also what we will wrap up today's episode with. Two wins, three losses, Josh Richardson re-signed, Kyle Kuzma back from injury and a trade on the horizon. I think that is a good result for today. 
So as always, if you like this video, then leave a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel and stay up to date, then feel free to subscribe. And maybe you also want to check out my other series. I just launched a completionist series of South Park The Stick of Truth, which I'm sure will be an incredibly entertaining playthrough. Also, once again, let me know your thoughts on the trade down below, and I can say thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!